All right, guys, welcome to Toth Outdoor Productions. This week we're going to review the Spy Point Link Micro and the Cutty Back Cutty Link cell cameras. We've been running them for a couple months now, and I feel like I'm getting a good enough handle on everything to give you an honest and a hunter's version of a review rather than a sales pitch. So let's uh, dive right into the Cutty Backs first. We'll start there. The um, so we are running the Cuddyback Dual Flash cellular camera as the home camera, and we're running the J1415 um, remote cameras. And if you're not familiar with the CuddyLink system, the idea of it is one phone plan for up to 16 cameras. Now, each camera has to be close enough to link to the other camera, so your remote cameras can be able to send or daisy chain the pictures back to your cell cam or then they can be sent to your phone. So let's go into the pros. Uh, I always like to give them as many props as I can first and then we'll beat them up later. Um, so what I do like about the cutty backs are I noticed that, you know, number one, all of my objects are centered and it's really nice compared to cheaper cameras that we've run. You know, you always get in the rear end of the deer or the head or half of its rack. You know, with, with the cutty backs, we do seem to get pretty much everything dead center of the camera, which is nice. Um, the pictures are clear. Even coming through my phone, you know, the deer can be 40, 50, 60, 70 feet, and I can zoom in and it's not pixelated bad enough that I can't tell how many points the deer has or how old I think the deer is everything comes out pretty clear you know they're also um, they seem to be reliable I like the warranties that come with the cutty backs and overall I feel like you get a very solid camera you know you can tell when you when you're just playing with it the construction's nice all the rubbers tight fitting I like the lid systems um, but there are a couple things that I'm not real fond of and I want to touch on them real quick for the cutty backs. Uh, their their uh, buttons in the camera, they abbreviate everything, which I understand you have to with a small screen, but you know, it definitely took me a little while to get used to. I mean, I the first day we took those cameras to the woods, I stood at the base of the first tree for 40 minutes. You know, I'd already set them up, activated them, and read the manual once and I had forgot it, all the abbreviations are just not things that I would call normal so I had forgot a lot of that stuff and I stood at the base of the tree trying to get this stupid thing to work um, you know some tips I'll give you if you do the cutty link system set up your home first and then work out from there even if you plan on putting eight cameras attached to that one you want to connect them all while you're standing close and then walk away the CL level is your uh, linkage level and I think the manual said 50 or better you know what I've noticed is as you're walking away I'll, I'll normally get them down to like 46 and if if you stop there they come up a little bit after they've been there for a little while I don't know if it just takes a while for them to get oriented in the, the terrain or what but they definitely seem the level de does seem to come back up a little bit after we put them up so I'm not a big fan of the buttons or the abbreviation system you know I wish they would just have an app um, or you know something a little more user friendly that it, it didn't take so long now that I've got it though it's a lot easier to handle so it's not a big problem but it is a downfall in my mind the biggest probably problem that I have with them is their battery life now the remote cameras seem to do pretty good with lithium batteries they hold double a's but the dual flash because it is taking in all those pictures you know it really sucks the home camera down and we burnt lithium um or extended life d batteries number one d batteries are expensive number two they it seemed to kill it at like every 10 to 12 days. I mean, it was ridiculous. I only check my regular cameras once a month. I'm not going to my cell cam every 10 days to change the batteries. So what we ended up doing was buying the solar panel kit and rechargeable batteries, which aren't cheap either. So I, I think in the end with the lockbox, the camera, I know those cameras retail for around 180. Um, that might be a little bit on sale, but they're right in that 
area. But then you have a $30 or $40 lockbox, a $70 solar thing, plus all the rechargeable batteries that go in, plus the recharger. And I mean, it, it definitely got costly. I would say in that home camera, I'm over $350. So it's definitely not, you know, I wish almost they would just sell you that as a package so you knew what you were getting into because I bought a $180 camera and I was justifying it saying, well, spy points are 120, I'll buy the 180 ones and it'll save me monthly, which it does. But, you know, I didn't know there was going to be all those hidden, almost double the price of the camera just to quote unquote make it work like it's advertised. So those are the cons of the cutty back. I, I don't like the button system. I'm really not happy with their battery life. The remote cameras seem to last about a month with lithium batteries, and even that gets costly. But you know, you're gonna have some cost in them. Then let's jump over to the spy point. So we're running this year's new model, the Link Micro. They're 115 bucks. They are very bottom dollar type cell cam, but they have some good and bad sides, so let's let's dive into that. Um, I think we have four or five of them now that we've been running since the summer. Um, they cost seven to ten dollars a month per piece. They're 120 bucks up front. Um, eBay, Amazon have them at those prices. I know they do come with Verizon, AT&T, which is nice and. For us, we get a little better service with AT&T, so we have all the AT&T versions. Um, and they run effectively. And they, I let's, I guess, do the pros on them first. Their app is awesome. I like their app. It's easy, you know, there's no buttons on the camera, so it's super easy to go into the app, apply the changes to however you wanna set the camera up. It's full length words, it's not abbreviations like the cutty back system. And they're very, in my mind, they're much more user friendly. Um, and they do, they have their purpose. And, but on the con end of it, you know, the pictures are very uh, pixelated or distorted. You know, in my mind, when that deer gets over about 30 feet, the picture's too blurry anymore. You can tell if it's a big buck or a little buck or a doe, but don't plan on, you know, setting your sights on one particular eight point and being able to watch them with spy points. It, it don't work. They, as soon as that deer gets over that 30, 40 feet mark, um, the picture's too pixelated to be able to tell what it is. And, you know, they're, they, they work. I, I haven't done any, we haven't done any warranty work or anything like that with them. So I don't really know on that end how they are, but for 120 bucks, you get what you pay for. I feel like they serve their purpose as a cheap end, kind of throw it out there. And if it disappears, at least won't take, you know, won't take all your joy from the season away. So, I mean, my final thoughts, I would, I would say on both cameras are they each have their place and their part. If you want to, if you own your own farm or lease and you can trust that those cameras aren't going to disappear, uh, the cutty backs in my mind, if you're willing to make the investment, will save you the money long term. Um, and the spy points, they're cheaper, and you see that in the quality of the photos they send. You see that in the quality, in my mind, the quality of the camera. Um, but at the same point, you know, we hunt a lot of farms that aren't public, but they might as well be public. There's 20 guys hunting them, and you can't trust any of the people that are hunting it. And, you know, I don't want to see a $350 set of cuttybacks get stolen or more. So for us, we've implemented the spy points where farms that we'd like to have sell cams, but not want to lose that much money if one would happen to go missing. Um, you know, the spy point has the, uh, the cable hole for it. So you can cable it for like a couple bucks, you know, for your 10 or $15 cable they fit. And cuttybacks don't. I kind of forgot to touch on that. But overall, they're both decent cameras. They both worked like they said they would. I'm a little disappointed in the spy point pixelation and the um, distortion in the photos. And a little disappointed in cuttyback for their battery life. But both cameras are good. You just have to decide which implement you want to put them in. You know, do you want this to be a long-term investment? 
and have great pictures or do you want this to be something that it won't make you want to sit down and cry if it would happen to get stolen so we hope this helped you uh, there wasn't a ton of videos out on this so we decided to do one and just break it down a little bit and we wish you all the best of the luck in the 2019 season we'll see you here next time on Toth Outdoor Productions